Hi, my name is Jessica Burke. I'm a graduate student in the nutrition program here at Central Washington University. I'm presenting today on my research thesis titled Investigating the Effects of Body Weight Fluctuations on Insulin Resistance in Adults, an NHANES study. Dr. David G. is my committee chair, and my other committee members are Dr. Susan Hawk and Mrs. Dana Ogan. I researched weight cycling in adults, which can be defined as intentional weight loss followed by weight regain. Weight cycling has been linked to adverse cardiovascular health and increased mortality in multiple studies. And it may increase the risk of developing an eating disorder or abnormal eating patterns. Weight cycling is also associated with an increased risk of diabetes as it's shown to be associated with higher fasted insulin levels and a higher HOMA IR. Therefore, the aim of my study was to examine if there was a relationship between the history of weight cycling and the development of insulin resistance. As mentioned on my previous slide, HOMA IR stands for Homeostatic Model Assessment for Insulin Resistance. It's a convenient, indirect way to measure insulin resistance by performing a simple calculation using a person's fasted blood glucose and fasted insulin. It's closely correlated to the gold standard of measuring insulin resistance, which is the hyperinsulinemic euglycemic clamp. This method, however, is expensive and time-consuming and not ideal for large research studies. Therefore, in my study, I used HOMA IR to define insulin resistance in my population. I downloaded and analyzed data from the 2015 to March of 2020 NHANES collection. NHANES stands for the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey that is held here in the United States. All participants in the survey provided informed consent and all identifying information was removed prior to the survey data sets being made publicly available online. I used statistical analysis system, known as SAS, to perform statistical analysis. And I excluded subjects who were pregnant or lactating at the time of testing, who were taking diabetic medication or insulin, who were not fasted and did not provide the morning blood sample at the mobile examination center, and those who were younger than 30. After applying the subject exclusion criteria, it narrowed down the number of subjects in my study to 4,100. The results of my study showed that weight cycling was prevalent amongst adults. Uh, women weight cycled more than men, with two thirds of the female population having reported weight cycling at least once in their lifetime. Adults ages 60 and older were the least likely to have a history of weight cycling, and adults ages 45 to 59 had the highest prevalence of weight cycling. Differences in weight cycling were significant between race ethnicities. Non-Hispanic whites weight cycled the most out of all the ethnic groups, and non-Hispanic blacks were second. Weight cycling was the most prevalent amongst participants with obese BMIs compared to participants with normal or overweight BMIs. When I included participants who took hypoglycemic agents or insulin in the study sample, it was found that people with diabetes, those whose fasted glucose levels were above 125 milligrams per deciliter, or those who use diabetes medication, weight cycled more than people without diabetes. Using a value of 3.2 as the cutoff for the homeostatic model assessment of insulin resistance, or known as HOMA-IR, it was found that 33.1% of the study population were classified as being insulin resistant. As you can see on the left-hand side, people with insulin resistance had a higher prevalence of weight cycling three times or more than people without insulin resistance and people without insulin resistance had a higher percentage of never weight cycling at 42.7% compared to 
compared to the 33.8% of people with insulin resistance who had never weight cycled. I performed a simple logistic regression to examine the odds of developing obesity from a history of weight cycling. So compared to people who have never weight cycled, people who have weight cycled one to two times were two times as likely to develop obesity. And people who weight cycled three times or more were four times as likely to develop obesity compared to those who have never weight cycled. Both of these odds ratios were significant as shown by the 95% confidence intervals and the p-values. Next, I performed a multivariate logistic regression to examine the odds of developing insulin resistance after adjusting for the following confounding variables, a history of weight cycling, BMI, sex, race, ethnicity, and age. And as you can see here, after controlling for these confounding variables, this odds ratio that's pulling far out to the right is a BMI of 30 or higher, and it's by far the leading predictor of developing insulin resistance. So therefore, an obese BMI increased the likelihood of developing insulin resistance by almost nine times compared to a normal or overweight BMI. On the other hand, if you look at the top of this figure, a history of weight cycling had no effects on the development of insulin resistance. However, men had a 50% increased uh, likelihood of insulin resistance compared to women. And when you look at the race ethnicities, compared to whites, Asian Americans and Mexican Americans were about two times as likely to develop insulin resistance. Non-Hispanic Blacks were neither at a lower or higher odds of developing insulin resistance compared to whites. And looking at the bottom of this figure, you can also see that people ages 60 and older were at a 50% increased likelihood of developing insulin resistance than people of younger age. To conclude, my research showed that it was not the weight cycling that increased the risk of insulin resistance per se, but the effects of weight cycling the increased likelihood of developing obesity, which was highly associated with developing insulin resistance. A key finding in the study was that Asian Americans and Mexican Americans were at increased risk of insulin resistance after adjusting for a history of weight cycling, BMI, sex, and age. Future research needs to aim at deciphering optimal ranges for home IIR in different race ethnicities and for people with normal glucose metabolism. Thank you for listening to my presentation. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in a comment or you can also email me at jessica.burke at cw.edu. And these are the references that I have cited on slide two. Thank you so much.